going on youtube what is going on kansas city and what is going on everybody and welcome to the beat of kc ladies and gentlemen it happened it's official the big 12 approves and votes unanimously to all four schools this is an incredible day for the remaining eight schools that are left in the big 12 yes there's a lot of things that we wish would have happened but this truly is a big moment i mean it really is you're adding four new schools and they really bring a lot, and each one has their own entity and what they provide to the Big 12. Now, I'm super excited. I'm looking forward to providing you an absolute tremendous article that was written by ESPN. There is a lot of great information. We understand that, you know, after the vote and the approval, then each of the four schools held press conferences and are continuing to hold press conferences. Uh, and, and what's incredible is that you're hearing what each one provides, like I stated. Um, you know, what was unique is hearing Bowlesby talk about this and, and we're going to dive in and hear some of the things that he said per this, uh, you know, this article, but I'm excited guys. I really am. I, you know, when this first came out, I was all about KU joining potentially the big 10. Um, but as we've progressed and got to a certain point, I'm, I'm accepting an okay of this. Um, you know, I, I really am. I, I want to see this be successful, you know, being from Kansas city, the Big 12 tournament is one thing that's always been exciting. It brings a lot of people to Kansas City, and, and and you're allowed to see what Kansas City is about, and that's what's unique too. So I'm glad that we're at least going to have the Big 12 tournament until 2025, and you know there it's just going to be very cool to see all these schools being added. So without further ado, actually. I ask that you guys smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, comment down below. You guys have been absolutely doing amazing. I love the engagement. Love what is going on in the comment section. It's so amazing. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for the support. I'm going to keep doing that because truthfully, ladies and gentlemen, this means so much to me. The support has been through the roof and I'm beyond excited to provide this content to you because it's been a lot of fun and, and I truly care about it. So again, thank you. But let's dive in. Let's talk about this. So ESPN article, the headline says, Big 12 gives okay to BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF. So diving in, it says the Big 12 presidents and chancellors voted on Friday and accepted BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF into the conference. In a statement, the Big 12 said the four schools were approved unanimously. By the eight continuing members, individual boards are set to formally accept later Friday. Probably today. I mean, today's Friday. The move comes less than two months after the Big 12 co-founders, Oklahoma and Texas, announced they would join the SEC by July 1st, 2025, leaving the future of the remaining eight schools in the Big 12 in a precarious position. I do 100% agree with that exact statement. I mean, people literally were on edge. Fan bases were on edge. I'm sure the schools themselves were on edge. What are we doing? I'm sure that they wanted to be aggressive and try to go and add to something else or become something else, whether that was the ACC or what, whether that was going to the Big Ten or even the Pac-12. Um, I, I just think that there was a lot of scrambling. And, um, you know, it's unique and, and pretty cool that these big eight, you know, probably sought out and felt, you know, put their feelers out there to see what the situation was and decided to take this path. So continuing on, it says Big 12 officials move quickly to make the league whole again, forming a subcommittee that concluded that the most successful football schools in the American Athletic Conference, Cincinnati, Houston and UCF, 
I think that's unique. It says football school. So again, we understand that that is the primary sport. We understand that that is the biggest sport that draws the most money. So they went after the ones that were football schools. It says Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF were the top choices along with independent BYU. The Big 12 was waiting until this week when those schools formally indicated they wanted to join the conference. Now, what I think is unique is that we've talked about this in the videos before. BYU is not tied to a conference, so they could join earlier, um, and we're going to talk about that. It says BYU will join the league for the 2023 to 2024 athletic season, with Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby saying the other three programs will join no later than July 1st, 2024, but possibly earlier. Bowlesby noted that all four have obligations to their existing leagues. Although BYU is a football independent school, its other programs participate in the West Coast Conference. AAC bylaws require schools to give a 27-month notice before they leave to pay a $10 million buyout fee. In that scenario, joining by the 2023 season would be a long shot. But some sources have said it is a realistic, basically a realistic opportunity. An earlier exit with a higher buyout is always a possibility. As a result, it's possible that the league could temporarily expand to as many as 14 teams if those schools join before Oklahoma and Texas leave. And I think that would be interesting. I really do. I think it would be interesting to see Oklahoma and Texas in the same conference before they leave to the SEC and really see how that plays out that year. You know, see them go up against the likes of a Cincinnati, see them go up against the likes of a BYU, maybe even just see what competition UCF can provide them. I'm not saying by any means that uh, they would be, you know, competing or anything like that. I just say it would be a great game because those are the types of games you hope to see at some point anyways. Um, and they're not always on the schedule. And, you know, some of these teams have been, you know, like currently Cincinnati, depending on which poll you look at is seven, eight, or even sometimes nine in the top 25. Um, it says, basically, I certainly wouldn't foreclose on any of the institutions coming in as early as July 1 in 2023, Bowlesby said. He also further, the expansion remains a possibility for the conference. Right there is a huge piece. And ladies and gentlemen, I hit on this in the last one. I do not think that they're done expanding. And he assures that right there. Bowlesby also said further expansion remains a possibility for the conference. I think they're trying to get to 14, even possibly 16 teams. I do not think that this is over with. I do think that they are still interested in the likes of a Memphis. I do think that they are interested in a Boise State. There are other schools out there. There's a lot of scenarios could, that could start to play out with whatever happens in college football and the landscape. So I do not think that this is done. And that assures that right there from Bowlesby. He continues to say, we are always going to be open to new opportunities as they present themselves. I sure hope so, sir, because it's about time. Bowlesby said, we're living in a very fast-changing athletic environment, and we will be at 14 for a while. We will drop back to 12, and as there are targets of opportunity or as there are situations that dictate that we change composition, we'll be prepared to do those things. His job, I really think, is predicated on continuing to do this and to make the Big 12 successful. I mean, there's no question that's what his job is, but I think he literally got on the hot seat, felt how hot that seat was, and he's like, man, I got to do whatever we possibly can. This is that. I mean, this truly is that. He needs to go out and get more schools and make the Big 12 something special, um, and, and that's what I'm hoping that continues to happen. Bowlesby said the Big 12 considered Houston and other candidates back in 2016, but ultimately chose to remain at 10 members. I don't necessarily think that was the case. I'm pretty sure there was probably some pressure that was put on from some other schools. Uh, it says nothing that it was disappointed for those at Houston to hear. The planned departures of Oklahoma and Texas made the conference re-examine where it stood. With Texas and OU moving to the SEC, it caused a renewed consideration of the options that are available, Bowlesby said. The more, uh, or, the more our group became committed to one another and moving forward with the group of eight, the more they began to believe adding additional members made good sense, and I do too. OU and Texas issued a joint statement in late July saying they intend to remain in the Big 12 through June 30th, 2025, when the current Big 12 media rights deal expires. But it's possible the schools could attempt to exit sooner. 
Each university would have to pay a penalty of at least $75 million to $80 million to break that agreement. That's a tremendous amount of money for some people. It may not necessarily be for a Texas or an Oklahoma. With the departure of the Big 12, the depleted AAC is expected to hunt for new members as it will shrink to eight schools. So that's something also I've seen people in the comment section want me to talk about, and that is going to be what can happen to the AAC. Um, it, the president of the remaining AAC member institution issued a statement to address not being picked to join the Big 12. Our understanding is that this latest round of expansion for the Big 12 essentially came down to the size of the institutions and the markets in which they reside. Memphis President David Rudd said in a statement that also described the athletic program as being disappointed and frustrated with the Tigers not being included. AAC Commissioner Mark Arisco chose to view Friday's news as a validation of quality of conference. The irony that there are three of our schools are being asked to take the place of two marquee schools, which are leaving the Big 12, is not lost on us. Our conference was targeted for exceeding expectations in that system and was designed to accommodate our success. I think that I I don't think they're done. I really do not believe that they are done picking from them. Um, I think that they could look to add more. I've said that multiple times, and I know a lot of people in the comment section agrees. All three of these institutions have enjoyed unprecedented success as members of the American, as have our remaining schools. Although the conference hasn't made any statements about which teams it plans to go after, likely targets for the AAC would include top teams from the Mountain West, such as Boise State, which is interesting. I mean, because I think Boise could be one of those ones that, you know, the Big 12 could potentially look at to add in the future. So with all that being said, I really do appreciate you guys showing the support, showing the love, and it just means so much. I really do look forward to the continuation of what's going to happen. Uh, I really do look forward to the, all the information that continues to pour out and really kind of breaking down hopefully each school and, and again, maybe making a video on each one. I'll, I'd like to hear what you guys' thoughts are on this edition. I know that there's kind of a divide. There's a lot of people who take the position of, the Big 12 should have disbanded. The school should have went to the major, major conferences, and that should be the end of the Big 12. Uh, others are very on board with what is going on. I like it. I'm on board with it. My first take was I was hoping, like I stated earlier, I was hoping a Big 10 for KU, but I think this still makes them to allows them to be competitive. I do think basketball obviously is the powerhouse and the suit for what KU can offer. But when you look at the grand scheme of things, if KU can start to turn the program, football program around and become somewhat successful, these are good schools to compete against. Cincinnati has been tremendous. I mean, like I stated earlier, they are in the top 25. BYU has put out some very good products and in, in, in players and has also put out some very good football teams. Same with basketball. I mean, it, it, continuing down the list, Houston, final four product last year in basketball continues to be getting better and better at football. UCF has had an undefeated season and has done tremendous things. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they transfer over to the Big 12 and, you know, what kind of recruiting. That's another big thing too, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that recruiting is going to be so significant. And it opens the window to all kinds of different time zones and things like that for the Big 12. It's just going to be an incredible, incredible time. And a lot of these schools will continue to get better. That's what's going to be pretty cool to see. Uh, so I do appreciate you guys checking out the beat of KC. And as always, have a good day.